as a brother or sister organization of SCO, how does uh, Economic uh, Cooperation Council looking at the agenda of SEO Summit this year, and what do you think are the crucial tasks they really need to showcase to you and also to their, uh, to its uh, sister brother organizations? Our part partnership and cooperation with the Shanghai Cooperation Organization mm. is uh, very important for us. Uh, uh, as as you noticed, we had uh, shared areas of activity uh, for, for us. For example, it's a very important uh, trade and investment, which is our priority area, then uh, transport and communication, uh, then uh, energy, uh, minerals and environment, agriculture and industry, uh, human resources and sustainable development, tourism, which is picking up in both organizations. And these areas, uh, which uh, I believe Shanghai Cooperation Organization also can see that these areas, the areas of priority to, to them, I think we can join hands and, uh, and uh, develop and implement a joint uh, pro projects with the sh uh, this sister organization, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And by the way, my uh, colleague, uh, Ambassador Jan Min, sec Secretary General of Shanghai Cooperation Organization, we uh, this used this opportunity to, to meet once again on the sidelines of the Astana Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit. It, and our meetings became uh, regular and became uh, traditional uh, to meet uh, for us as two uh, SGs of two regional organizations on the sidelines of the major uh, international uh, events and use this platform to, uh, to update each other on the developments in our organization and discuss uh, the issues related to further development and strengthening our cooperation and partnership. Economic cooperation cannot be done without good connectivity. We see initiatives of connectivity in the region, for example, Central Asia, and uh, even where we are uh, in Kazakhstan has been regarded as a hub uh, here in the middle corridor. Yes. Meanwhile, you also see the Belt and Road Initiative yes. joined by both members of your organization and that of SCO as well, and that is another one platform. And at the same time, you see different uh, economies are coming up with their inventive ways to bring everybody together. So how do you see these mechanisms complement one another, but at the same time, could be also friendly competing with one another? If we look at the map of geographical map of the organization of the economic cooperation organization, right. the first glance will understand the importance of this, orga of this area for the international transport and communication. Because it's a unique, unique territory connecting different parts of the world. From the east, China. From the west, it's the Euro European Union. Yeah. From the north, Russia. And from the south, Arab, Arab world. Yes. So it's, it, it is in the crossroad. It has been for centuries, for millennia, the crossroad. So, and our uh, efforts, new efforts on, on, on building new roads, new corridors, should build up on, 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 on what we have had during this long uh, period of uh, our common history. Yes. Uh, so, investment is important. Member states of our organization, mainly developing countries. So, so we need, uh, we need uh, attract in international investment uh, from different partners and in China uh, with its uh, huge potential could be uh, uh, the important major partner for our organization in the implementation of our projects in uh, communication and transport, uh, uh, transport sectors. An organization has to get updated yeah. in a very different world today compared to when it was uh, being founded. Yeah. So what is the best way, the most efficient way? As the Secretary General, I'm sure, deep in your heart, you know the secret. Yeah, <laughs> actually, this, this topic also was discussed 
and during uh, my meeting with uh, Ambassador Ming, yeah. because I, 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 I showed interest on the reform process which is underway in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Indeed. And the similar processes are going on in the Economic Cooperation Organization. Because every organ for every organization, the efficiency, visibility is paramount, of paramount importance. That's why we are in constant uh, search how to make our organization more efficient and globally and internationally visible. And, and, uh, uh, and I, I believe uh, the, during the next uh, meeting of the high-level committee, which is newly established uh, body in our organization at the level of uh, deputy foreign ministers, the issue of the uh, uh, reforms and, and the organization will be uh, discussed thoroughly and in, 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 de in detail. Right. With this long history of achievements, but uh, we see that uh, we, have, we have a lot of rooms to make our organization more efficient and uh, uh, more, uh, uh, more, more visible. So there are uh, many ideas yeah. presented by member states, but these ideas should be discussed and we should find uh, strong uh, some some kind of consensus on how we should move forward. Right. In this regard, uh, for us, exchange of experience with our peer organizations, including uh, Shanghai Cooperation, uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, is yeah. important. Mr. Secretary General, another important question, because of your members, um, they are rich in natural resources, mm -hmm. whether it's crude oil, natural gas, yeah. raw materials and even critical minerals, which are crucial for today's uh, innovation and new technology industries. Meanwhile, we also see geopolitics change. Yes. In other words, competition for political purposes, for economic and trade purposes will be very high for these raw materials. So Mr. Secretary General, how do you make sure that your member countries and economies are going to make the right decision and also they are going to make the right decision for their own people uh, to avoid some of the earlier generation practices of developing countries being exploited of raw materials uh, and yet they have not been given the equal opportunity for development. For each country it's, it's a natural the priority is their national interest. Absolutely. And the interest of their people. So most of the, or all of the member states of our organization are, are rich in natural resources, be it uh, fossil fuel, gas, oil, uh, etc., or hydropower, for example, like Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. Indeed. Uh, so in, in, in case of Tajikistan, for example, the 60% of water resources of Central Asia generated in Tajikistan. Amazing. So you can see the importance of Tajikistan as a... Uh, as green a, energy. A green energy, yeah. And uh, uh, Tajikistan relies, uh, I think, about 90% on the, this green energy of hydropower. The same we can say about the, uh, Kyrgyzstan. So uh, we have diverse richness, abundance in terms of the energy. And this, I think, this uh, uh, different energy resources should be, should, should be somehow be uh, uh, taken under one umbrella. Um, um, umbrella in the, in the framework of, of organization. And there should be complementary and there should be uh, exchange. For example, one country is, uh, has a, a lot of uh, energy produced on the hydropower. Mm -hmm. So it has abundance of this uh, uh, electricity yeah. and it, it needs to exp export it, to yeah. be shared. And some countries, they need but at the same time, this, uh, this uh, country producing the electricity based on the hydropower, in the winter time, it, it has 
not sufficient electricity because in the winter time we, we see the decrease the volume of the right, water right. so in this in this in this time in this season the, they should be able to to uh, to replace uh, so so to create an yeah. ecosystem within yeah. the organizations yeah. the member yeah. economy yeah. so it should be some some kind of mechanism and framework uh, for cooperation in the energy sector is needed that's why uh, we have now uh, implementing two flagship uh, projects one of uh, which is the uh, establishment of clean energy center in baku mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we believe that inauguration of this uh, newly established clean energy uh, center uh, will happen during the next COP29 yes. yeah. which will be hosted by Azerbaijan and and it is uh, uh, it is uh, for us it is very uh, good news that Azerbaijan as a issue member states is hosting this global event so and of course uh, the uh, economic cooperation organization is 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 going to avail this opportunity right. to make uh, visible its potential in energy and uh, and and uh, environment issues and what uh, contribution it can make to the global agenda of climate change and right. and etc. We see the global trade rules has been challenged mm -hmm. over the past years and the fragmentation of geopolitics certainly did not help. Mm -hmm. At this point, we see trade protectionism rise. We see tariffs, for example, against uh, some of the applications of the latest green technologies, for example, reflected in issue of electronic vehicles. Mm -hmm. How do you see, Mr. Secretary General, this trend? Um, what do you think is the way to avoid further escalation of this challenge. For us, trade and inter-regional trade, top priority, but uh, the challenges and the, the, the policies which we see in the global trade, of course, are not helping us. And, and uh, I think uh, we all come to conclusion that uh, the, the, the uh, this uh, politics should be not should not be used uh, against the interest of the me uh, uh, members of the world community, and and the necessary conditions should be created for developing trade.